So with that very, very brief uh, background, um, I will invite the first speaker today, uh, Dr. Rustam. He's a scientist at Montpellier in France. Uh, he works on the SARS and dengue virus, and today he will present the uh, his escapades essentially on the um, NSP14, which essentially it's, a, it's an enigmatic protein in multiple ways, of course, but it has two main functions. One is the exonuclease function. The second is the methyl transferase. So with that, without much, much further ado, uh, Rustam, all yours. Thank you, Kumar. Good afternoon, everyone. And first, many thanks to Novartis, who invited me to present a part of our work in Montpellier. So currently, I am a postdoctoral researcher at the Institute of Biomedical Max Mousseau. And a few months ago, I defended my PhD thesis where we focused on the development of uh, nucleoside and novel oligonucleotides targeting RNA methyltransferases from emerging viruses. So today, I will only focus on the coronaviruses. So after cell infection and during RNA maturation, a cap structure is added at the five prime extremity of messenger RNA. And this cap structure consisting of a guanosine linked to the first transcribed nucleotide by a triphosphate bridge is subjected to two methylation using s adenosyl methionine the SAM, as a methyl donor. Indeed, NSP14 methylates at the N7 position of guanosine and NSP16 methylates at the two prime position of first transcribed nucleotide. For both SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2, the first nucleotide is an adenosine, and this methylation improves viral RNA stability, translation of messenger RNA by ribosome, and high and protect messenger RNA against immune system. So blocking this methylation could be a real strategy to inhibit viral infection. So this strategy has already been used and led to the identification of uh, some analog inhibitors, for example, methyl 2 adenosine and cinefingine, but they are not specific as they inhibit other methyltransferases, methylating at various posi positions and including human methyltransferases. So to overcome this lack of specific specificity, we, as we are working on RNA methyltransferases, we start to focus on RNA 2'O methyltransferases by designing specific inhibitors consisting of bisubstrate inhibitors mimicking, for instance, state of 2'O methylation of messenger RNA. So indeed, during 2'O methylation, NSP16 hosts messenger RNA represented in blue and the SAM represented in green in that configuration to produce 2 primo methylated messenger RNA. So designing mimics of the transient state of 2 primo methylations amounts to synthesize this kind of dinucleoside where this adenosine in blue represents the RNA, this adenosine in green represents the SAM, each part separated by various linkers, and all compounds were sent to the team of uh, Dr. Bruno Canard and Dr. Etienne de Croly for enzymatic evaluation. So at first, we developed a series of uh, dinucleoside with a sulfur-containing linker. Uh, the synthesis strategy is fully described in our paper. And surprisingly, none of the compound inhibited 2'O methyltransferases, including the one of SARS-CoV. But don't forget this structure because I will come back to it later in the presentation. Then a second series of dinucleoside with a nitrogen on the linker was obtained. And besides, we succeeded to incorporate the amino acid chain of the SAM on the linker. So about the synthesis strategy, a reaction between this tosyl adenosine and this nosyl adenosine both prepared after four steps from adenosine, allowed us to obtain the fully protected dinucleoside. Oh, animation doesn't work, sorry. Um, then a deprotection with stiophenol and um, nasidic treatment afforded the dinucleoside with a secondary amine on the linker. Using classical alkylation or reductive amination followed by an acidic treatment we uh, obtained various functionalized dinucleoside, and we also had the idea 
to treat directly the fully protected dinucleoside in an acidic treatment, and we obtain the nitrobenzene sulfonamide derivative because uh, benzene sulfonamide moiety are present in many drugs. Well, once again, none of the compound inhibited 2 prime O methyltransferases, including the one of SARS-CoV, but while we tested specificity against other methyltransferases, we identified the inhibition of the NSP14 protein with one compound. And indeed, the nitrobenzene sulfonamide derivative had a specific inhibition of SARS-CoV NSP14 protein with an IC50 or 2.6 micromolar. And after several optimization, we finally identified the 4-chloro-3-nitrobenzene sulfonamide derivative with an IC50 of 0.6 micromolar and a selectivity index against the human methyltransferases, the N7 methyltransferases human, with a selectivity index of 413, while cinefungin is more active against the human methyltransferase. To confirm the interest of the best dinucleoside we identified using DSF, we measured the NSP14 denaturation temperature in the presence of different ligands. And briefly, the highest the TM, the highest the affinity. And we identified that, that our best compound had the best affinity compared to the non-specific inhibitor, the cinefungin, or even the SAM, the natural ligand. And we also made molecular docking experiments to understand how the dinucleoside could possibly interact into the SARS-CoV protein. And one thing we noticed is this P-stacking interaction between the phenyl... Sorry, I don't know why it changed, sorry. One thing we noticed is uh, this P-stacking interaction between the, between the phenyl ring of uh, the dinucleoside and this, uh, the, the phenylalanine 4 to 6 residue, which naturally stacks the guanosine of the cap structure of messenger RNA. But what about the absence of 2 prime O methyltransferase recognition? Because this is, what we, this is what, what we wanted to obtain at first. Well, NSP16 is a cap-dependent 2 prime O methyltransferase. So we made the hypothesis that the absence of a cap structure or RNA ch chain was crucial for RNA uh, um, two prime O methyltransferase recognition. So consequently, what we did next was to incorporate dinucleoside into oligoribonucleotide. And first uh, generation of oligoribonucleotide contains two ether linker, but we also obtained uh, oligoribonucleotide with amino linker and triazole linker based on SARS-CoV-2 sequence. So today I will only talk about tioether linker and triazole linker. The tioether linker uh, was obtained before RNA elongation on solid support by synthesizing the phosphoramide dinucleosides. And the construction of oligoribonucleotide was achieved using an automated synthesizer and capping, st capping steps and deprotection conditions were applied to obtain the desired oligoribonucleotides. IC50, in the submicromolar was obtained for both four and six lengths. And triazole linker was obtained after RNA elongation on solid support using copper catalyzed acid alkene cycloaddition conditions. And after the protection condition were applied to obtain the desired oligoribonucleotide. And also here, IC50 in both uh, micromolar, uh, submicromolar was obtained for both four and six lengths. Well, enzymatic inhibition is a bonus because what we really want to obtain to do is to co-crystallize the oligoribonucleotide modified with NSP16 protein. On this slide is presented the crystal structure of the tannery complex made of NSP16, a short RNA, and the SAM. But it is very tough to obtain a well-resoluted crystal because of the low affinity and stability of RNA into the protein. So we think that the SAM analog linked to the RNA, which is the dinucleoside, will help to obtain a good crystallization and resolution. 
to conclude about this part of our work, without a cap structure or RNA chain, we identified several nitrobenzene sulfonamide derivatives as good and specific inhibitors of uh, NSP14 protein, but no inhibition of viral infection in cells. During the emergence of SARS-CoV-2, we continued to work on it and a novel class of compound was developed. And what I can tell you now, but I can't show you now, is that we identified several uh, nucleoside analog as inhibitors of SARS-CoV-2 NSP14 protein in the micromolar and nanomolar range, and also inhibition of viral infection in cells. And with cap structure and RNA chain, we identified several oligoribonucleotide modified as inhibitor of the NSP16 2 prime O methyltransferase. So I hope to be able to present these results for another symposium when this uh, result will be, will be published. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Francoise Debar and Dr. Jean-Jacques Vasseur for the supervision of this work, the Cambion Act team, the University of Montpellier, the ANR for the financial support of uh, my postdoctoral position, uh, Dr. Etienne de Crowley, Dr. Priscilla Stortis, and Dr. Bruno Canard for the great collaboration we have on this project, and finally you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Rustam, for that very nice presentation that emphasizes both the possibility of getting nucleoside-like drugs and uh, to target this very enigmatic target. So we have a few questions coming in, and this is, again, a kind, gentle reminder for people to please post any questions you may have into the chat session, which is being moderated. So my first, uh, one of the first questions is, what do you think of the potential for resistance emerging for specifically for this target? And are the interactions these nukes make with these conserved residues? Yes, about resistance, like it was said before, uh, are there are nucleosidic inhibitors, maybe there is, there will be resistance, but for now we just have to develop um, very potent inhibitors and yes, we we are thinking about it, but for now we, it is not uh, what we. Um, but w this is not our concern for, for now. And cool. about the interaction of these nukes make with yes interaction with conserved residues yes. Um, the protein is uh, ninety five percent uh, conserved uh, from SARS CoV and SARS CoV two. Um, and we also we also seen that all residue in the protein uh, in the sum binding pocket and the camp binding pocket are fully conserved. So we think that that, that's why we uh, also tested our compound on SARS-CoV-2 because of this high conservation of uh, uh, residue in the cap binding pocket and sum binding pocket. Right. One question, I know there's a few minutes, seconds left, but one question that I had is about the structural plasticity of the active site, both the SAM binding pocket and the adjacent RNA pocket. Yeah, how much of induced fit do you think is responsible for drive, would be responsible for driving potency? Um, about the residue on the protein, on the SAM binding pocket? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, but all the, re, all the residue in the SAM binding pocket are uh, very important for recognition of the SAM and also in the cap binding pockets. And uh, thanks to molecular modeling, we show that these residues are re very important, but um, we have to make crystallization of ligands into the protein to see uh, what residues are very important. Uh, this is what we... Right. Uh, plan to do for the future yeah thankfully the first structure came out recently i think for this this was for a very long time one of the few targets that was not structurally enabled this, the other question that uh, has come up is are are there studies with MERS given that there is a continuous but very small patient population that would could potentially benefit as we think about pandemic preparedness yes we started to make uh, we also made a uh, um, viral inhibition of uh, cells with MERS coronavirus. But we uh, 
obtain very uh, we obtain better results with SARS-CoV and SARS-CoV-2. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rustam. Truly appreciate your time presenting it today.